Hi, Lake County. Thanks for joining us for this week's installment of your top 10 questions about COVID-19. I'm Hannah Gehring, the Communications Manager for the Lake County Health Department and Community Health Center. And with me, I have a special guest to answer your questions. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon. This is Dr. Sana Ahmed. I am the Medical Epidemiologist here at Lake County Health Department. Uh, thank you for having me this afternoon. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our top 10 questions. First, how long is someone with COVID-19 contagious? So when viral shedding begins, how long it lasts, and the period of infectiousness for a person with COVID-19 are not yet well known, it is possible that SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, may be detectable in the airways for weeks after illness onset. However, that does not necessarily mean a person is still infectious. So if you have symptoms, you would recommend that you stay home for a minimum of seven days and don't go out in public until you are symptom-free or fever-free for the last three days of that period. Once you get the virus, does your body build immunity from it? So the immune response, including how long immunity lasts to a SARS-CoV infection is not yet well understood. Uh, patients infected with other coronaviruses are unlikely to be reinfected after they recover, but we don't yet know if this is the case with COVID-19. Several studies are being conducted to look at the body's response to the virus as it recovers. Okay, our next question from our residents is, I've heard that there are two strains of COVID-19. Is this true? So there's a recent paper that claimed that SARS-CoV-2 has split into two strains, an L and an S strain, with the L strain causing a more severe version of COVID-19. However, there has been a lot of discussion among scientists questioning if the minor changes are enough to distinguish it into two different strains. Additionally, there isn't enough evidence to say that one strain of SARS-CoV-2 causes worse disease than another. How long does the coronavirus live on certain objects? So from what we know about other coronaviruses, we believe it may live on the surfaces for a few hours up to several days. Now, there are several factors that can influence this, like the type of surface or the temperature in the environment. So if you think your surface of an object is contaminated, play it safe. Clean it with disinfectant wipes and don't forget to wash your hands. What do you recommend essential workers do to stay safe? The key, I believe, is to practice social distancing, which is to keep six feet away from others at all times. Practice good hand hygiene, washing your hands for at least 20 seconds or using alcohol-based hand sanitizer, making sure that you wipe down your work area with disinfection wipes before the start of your shift and after your shift completes, wearing a mask provided by your employer or wearing a cloth mask if your employer doesn't provide you one. And then we also recommend that uh, workplaces screen their employees for symptoms like fever, sore throat, cough, or shortness of breath before your shift. And if employees are found to have symptoms or have family members who are symptomatic, those individuals should be sent home. Can you tell us more about the new CDC guidance on wearing cloth face coverings? Sure. So this is a really good question. New evidence shows that some people with COVID-19 disease have no symptoms, and even people with no symptoms can spread it to others. So based off of that, CDC now recommends that when you go out in public for things like grocery shopping, buying medicine, filling your car with gas, that you wear a cloth mask. This is to protect other people around you in case you're infected and you don't know it. There are other important things that you should also consider, like having clean hands when you put on your mask, not touching your mask while wearing it, and then washing your mask between uses. Wearing a mask is not a substitute for social distancing, hand washing, or staying home when you're sick. We've gotten a lot of questions from our residents asking how they can donate masks or other items that are needed. That's great if you have the ability to do so. We have a distribution center set up in Liber Libertyville where we receive donations and shipments of personal protective equipment, PPE, and we distribute it to our first responders and long-term care facilities. So if you wanna make a donation of unused PPE in original packing, packing like N95 masks, face shields, hand sanitizers, visit our website for details on how to do that. 
Also, the United Way is coordinating volunteer opportunities in Lake County, including donations of cloth masks for vulnerable populations. You can find out more by viewing volunteer opportunities at 211lakecounty.org. Are there alternative sites being selected or prepared for the potential surge in patients as numbers rise? So Lake County has been, work, been working very closely with our hospital systems and planning for the possibility of opening an alternate care site should hospitals need it. So we've been looking at possible locations, what supplies we would need, how the site could be staffed and run. And right now an alternate care site is not being requested by our hospitals because we have sufficient capacity to meet our patient needs in the county. Hospitals are working to increase their bed capacity to serve more patients internally. Great. So why does Lake County's cases by municipality map have some areas being labeled as less than five? So the main reason we use ranges in our map is to protect privacy. Following the Illinois state code, when we share health data, we make every effort to make sure an individual cannot be identified through the data that we share. So if you share that one person is in a certain town and has a rare disease, the chances of identifying that person is pretty high. So when we are sharing the, the map of the municipality, uh, one way to protect the individuals is to provide a range of numbers. So in general, the smaller the number, the more likely a person can be identified. And finally, this is my favorite question. What is the most important thing that Lake County residents should know about COVID-19? So this is a really good question. I thank you for asking. COVID-19 has spread wide within our community. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of sheltering in place and practicing social distancing. Both of these strategies work to slow down the spread of the virus in our community. If you are home and ill with symptoms consistent with COVID-19, stay home and call your doctor. Do your part to limit the spread of this virus. Well, thank you so much, Sana, for being with us today. And thanks, Lake County, for sending in your questions. If you'd like to have us answer any questions, um, email COVID-19 at lakecountyil.gov, and we'll try to address your question in our video next week. Thanks so much. Thank you.